Venezuelan ambassador to Colombia, Felix Plasencia, presented copies of his credentials to the authorities in Bogota as part of the agenda for the re-establishment of bi-national diplomatic relations. In Guatemala, police forces and judicial officials evicted more than 50 indigenous families from their territories in Alta Vera Paz. A mission from the International Atomic Energy Agency arrived at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant to inspect the situation on the ground. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Colombia, Venezuelan Ambassador Felix Plasencia presented this Wednesday a copy of the credentials letters as part of the re-establishment of diplomatic relations between the two nations. During his meeting with Colombia's Foreign Minister Alvaro Leyva Duran, the Venezuelan diplomat pointed out that the re-establishment of relations has been already been formalized and is moving forward with determination and at the right pace. Plasencia stated that both countries are fundamental pillars of the best relations in Latin America and the Caribbean. Plasencia also made references to the work of peace, of understanding, of love between both peoples. Brotherly countries historically united and committed to a path of Latin American endeavor. On Tuesday, Colombian ambassador to Venezuela, Armando Benedetti, presented his credentials to President Nicolas Maduro and met with several Venezuelan authorities. The first thing is to establish diplomatic relations, to restore a presence, to appoint an ambassador in Caracas, to have an embassy in Bogota. We are already doing it. I have just presented a copy of the credentials to the Foreign Ministry Labour. We have formalized the re-establishment of relations on this side that had already been done in Caracas with President Nicolás Maduro and Ambassador Benedetti. This is the way forward. Plasencia also pointed out that relations between Colombia and Venezuela are moving forward with momentum and in the right direction towards Latin America's success. We are moving with momentum, with determination, and in the right direction. The right direction which is our commitment to brotherhood among brotherly peoples, among neighboring countries. We are fundamental pillars of the best relations in Latin America and the Caribbean. Venezuela and Colombia are the fundamental pillars to make the success of the Latin American community a reality. From here, because it is also historical, we have done it with the matters that concern us and that we will surely develop from this pre-establishment of the best relations between these brotherly peoples. A team of Peruvian archaeologists discovered the tomb of a very important priest in a religious complex in the north of the country. The discovery took place in the archaeological center Paco Pampa, located in the region of Cajamarca, by a group of experts from Peru's National University of San Marcos and the Ethnological Museum of Japan that have been exploring the site for almost two decades. The investigators referred to the tomb of the priest as a discovery of great importance because it is about a powerful leader of approximately 35 years and one of the oldest of the Andean civilization. The remains of the religious man were buried with exotic necklaces of seashells, earrings made of semi-precious stones brought from remote regions. A representation of the United Nations participated in a dialogue between the Ecuadorian government and the indigenous sectors. The UN Rapporteur for Indigenous Peoples and Nationalities, Francisco Calitzai, participated at the table where he learned about the methodology used in the dialogues. The participation of a representative of the United Nations in the dialogue tables is one of the requests of the social organizations which, in the month of June, carry out a date of protest to demand a solution to the increase in the cost of living. In Argentina, the Special Foreign Currency Access Agreement implemented by the government to boost soybean exports expires with a transaction volume of 2.6 billion U.S. dollars. The government program established the so-called soybean dollar, a preferential rate aimed at stimulating soy crop sales, especially to international markets amid difficulties derived from inflation. After the program expires, agricultural technicians will be looking for producers to get a greater reward than they could under the current system, while the central bank is seeking to increase its reserve, which as of July 22nd stood at 39,718 million US dollars.
Argentina's justice rejected Bolivia's prosecutor's request to take the statements of former President Mauricio Macri in the case of the anti-right material trafficking during the administration of former de facto President Janine Añez. Argentina's justice system stated that the request of the Bolivian prosecution is in conflict with the fundamental right provided in Article 18 of the National Constitution, which states that no one may be forced to testify against himself. Furthermore, judicial authorities indicate that Macri is under investigation and under indictment. It should be noted that the case of trafficking of anti-riot material dates back to November 13, 2019, when during Macri's administration, 40,000 anti-riot rounds of ammunition were sent to the Bolivian Armed Forces in their attempt to suppress demonstrations against Añez. Also in Argentina, activists from different organizations and social movements continue to hold a vigil this Wednesday for the 10th consecutive day in front of the home of Vice President Cristina Fernández de Kirchner. Since Wednesday's early hours in Recoleta, demonstrators stand in place without interrupting traffic to show their support. This is one of the many forms of support expressed by Fernandez followers since August 22nd, when Attorney General Diego Luciani asked for a 12-year sentence against the former president and her political disqualification. Also, Buenos Aires City Police, under the command of the opposition, Horacio Rodriguez Larreta, remain in the vicinity of the residents, despite Josh Roberto Gallardo of the province of Buenos Aires, ordered that no police custody be placed. Let us take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. In Guatemala, police forces and judicial officials evicted 55 indigenous families from their territories in Alta Vela Pass. The residents denounced that they are victims of an extrajudicial eviction by the public ministry after the judge, identified as Ricardo Cal, presented them with an eviction order that does not coincide with the respected signatures of the judge and other authorities. The legal defender of the evicted families, Herman Gomez, assured that the land ceased to belong to the National Army and became the property of the Ministry of Public Finance through the Directorate of State Assets as of November 16, 2021. They base their arguments on the fact that the Ministry of Defense is the owner of this property. And as we can see here, on November 16, 2021, at the request of the Ministry of Finance, they revoke, so to speak, they cancel the property to the Ministry of Defense and assign it to the Ministry of Public Finance through the Directorate of State Assets, as you can see from that account although this is an electronic copy precisely obtained today. Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador said the issue of the judges who free people allegedly involved in the disappearance of the fully free Ayotzinapa students will be dealt with. AMLO said he would not be giving the names of the judges involved in the case so as not to humiliate them, but that the government would be taking the issue to the Supreme Court of Justice and to the Council of Federal Judges. AMLO criticized members of the judiciary who later end up as members of parliament for that violates the separation of powers. AMLO also announced that newly appointed Education Secretary Leticia Ramirez will be in charge of regularizing the rural teacher schools in the country. We are going to present the cases. We are going to take care of the names and we are going to send everything to the judiciary, to the Supreme Court and to the Council of the Judiciary that have done nothing or very little because they should be there sanctioning judges. Mexico's President Andres Manuel López Obrador said in reference to the Ayotzinapa case that it would be historic and important to put an end to torture in the country. So if we can manage together to put an end to torture in Mexico, to say that there is no torture in Mexico, that is something historic, very important, that we can all commit ourselves to not allow torture on anyone under any circumstance. 
Cuba's President Miguel Diaz Canel reiterated the country's commitment to education and assured that a return to on site classes will take place next Monday. The head of state presided over a meeting with the ministries of general and higher education to fine tune details about the resumption of teaching activities. At the meeting, he stressed that in spite of the difficulties, the schools will continue with the activities as planned. Diaz Canel emphasized that education is a priority for Cuba, and for this reason, the state allocates 25% of its budget to this area despite the complex economic situation situation derived from the tightening of the United States blockade. In Brazil, a new survey says former President Luis Inácio da Silva leads voting invitation by 44 percent, 12 percentage points ahead of incumbent Jair Bolsonaro. The survey released Wednesday by the CUAS firm says the leader of the Workers' Party remains in the lead in the presidential race ahead of Bolsonaro, who has 32 percent. Lula's figures are close to the sum of the percentages of all his contenders, so the debates may give him the possibility of winning in the first round. In the event of a runoff, the same survey predicts 51% of votes for Lula against 37% for Bolsonaro. In Chile, the last campaign's events are taking place four days before the referendum on the new constitution. More than 15 million Chileans are summoned to the polls this Sunday to decide whether to approve or reject the new constitution. The closing acts of the campaign for their alternative of approval and rejection of the new constitution texts are prepared for this Thursday. The supporters of the approval will hold an act in the Alameda, while those who reject the new text will meet in the Pablo Neruda Amphitheater of the Metropolitan Park of Santiago. Chile's current constitution is a legacy of the dictatorial regime of Augusto Pinochet. Tesla will dedicate his coverage of the Football World Cup Qatar 2022 to the figure of the Armando Maradona. The football star will also tour our continent with the show De Sur da Viajero. We want this tribute to have its own music. With this in mind, we invite you to write, compose a song for Telesur's coverage of Qatar 2022 Football World Cup. It must be an original song, never recorded before or published in any media, and free of legal attachments. Record the song in any format, even with your cell phone, and send it as an attachment to comunicaciones at telesurtv.net with the following information, offers name, nationality, and name of the song. The closing date of the call for angels is September 10, 2022. A jury of prestigious musicians and composers from the region will select the winning piece. Their prize will be the recording of the song, a video clip, and the wide diffusion of the work. One week after the closing of the call, Telesur will announce the results. We have more news coming up after a final short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. On Wednesday, a mission from the International Atomic Energy Agency arrived at the Saporizhia nuclear power plant to inspect the situation on the ground. The agency director, Rafael Grossi, stated that the mission of scientists and technicians plans to spend several days at the plant as his organization hopes to create a permanent representation in Saporizhia. He added that it was extremely necessary to protect the safety and security of Ukraine's and Europe's biggest nuclear facility and that the visit aims to generate information that allows the international body to develop an assessment of the nuclear safety and security risks. Russia's Gazprom company stopped the flow of natural gas through a major pipeline from Russia to Europe on Wednesday, a temporary move announced in advance. The Russian state-owned multinational energy corporation said earlier this month that it would cut the flow of gas through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline until Saturday as part of a three-day pause for routine maintenance at the compressor station located at the Port of Aya Bay, 150 kilometers northwest of St. Petersburg. Iran's foreign minister, Hossein Amir Abdullahian, met with his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, in Moscow. 
The meeting happened at the Russian Foreign Ministry on Wednesday, and the two sides discussed issues of mutual interest at regional and international levels. The top diplomats, while explaining the latest state of bilateral relations, emphasized the need for comprehensive expansion of cooperation and interactions between the two countries in all areas. They discussed other issues like preparing the ground for a joint economic commission, strengthening interactions regarding trade, economy and energy, and also paving the way for the promotion of cultural and consular cooperation, as well as working together in the fight against COVID-19. This Wednesday, the deadline granted by Kenya's Supreme Court to the Electoral Authority to finalize the count authorized to lawyers of former Prime Minister Raila Odinga concludes after inspecting the servers and ballot boxes. The Supreme Court ordered Kenya's Independent Electoral Commission to provide Odinga's lawyers with ballot boxes from 15 polling stations. The recount is due to be completed today, as unanimously agreed by the seven members of the Supreme Court. Last August 22nd, Raila Odinga, who was running for the fifth time in a presidential election, challenged the result when William Ruto won with more than 50 percent of the votes. Four of the seven members of the Electoral Commission subsequently stated that the result had been opaque. We have information from Southeast Africa. At least 19 people have died in Madagascar in protest over the kidnapping of a child. Defense Minister Richard Rakotonina explained that in, King, in Como, in the southeast of the country, thousands of people tried to lynch four suspects arrested for the murder of a mother who tried to save her albino son from a kidnapping. When they tried to enter, the guards opened fire indiscriminately. The deputy, Jan Brunel, assures that there are 23 dead because there are no means to attend to the wounded. The Minister of Defense informed that the wounded would be transferred to the capital. He adds that in a state of law, no one can take justice into their own hands. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari said on Tuesday half a million Nigerians have been affected by floods caused by heavy rain since the start of the year. 23 of Africa's most populous countries, 36 states, are affected by seasonal flooding, with northeastern states particularly hard hit this year. Buhari's office said emergency services were providing aid and he was receiving regular updates on the floods, which have affected more than 500,000 Nigerians since January this year. In Maiduguri, the regional capital of northeast Borno state, people displaced by conflict have seen their farms and homes destroyed by flooding. Flooding is common in many parts of Nigeria during the rainy season, which runs from May to September. A decade ago, Nigeria suffered disastrous floods across most of its states, leaving hundreds dead and more than two million homeless. For the past eight years, we have informed the land but this year we did, but we have been very unfortunate. The floods came and destroyed all our farms. This water came with heavy force. It destroyed over 30 houses and killed many, mostly. Telesur English continues to grow. It's seen on our voices Europe. You can order from your cable dealer or to yourself. These parameters that you see on screen are in place since July 1st, and quite soon further changes will be implemented for the signals in the Middle East and Africa. Now more than ever, the world connects to us and our stories are heard in other faraway nations. This news multi-platform will continue providing truthful content to uphold the hegemonic media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. And we have come to the end of this news program. You can find these and many other stories on our website at tesorenglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. And now you can also follow us on TikTok at the account at Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and much more. For Telesur English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.